go into the altar of God. Our help is the name of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Well, thank God it's raining. I can't believe you have to say that on a Sunday, but I think it's been almost six, seven weeks since we had a nice downpour, so it's just beautiful out there. And you know, it's kind of amazing when you think about it, when I see Alice with a little watering can, you know, walking from here to there and how heavy that is, and you know, dragging that hose out to water all those uh, trees that we planted in the springtime. It takes like an hour, 20 minutes to water them. And all of that water, how heavy that is, is just floating over us and it just comes down so gently. You know, there's a lot of little miracles in our world. The ancients, when they saw it, they didn't know how the water got up in there in the first place. So they said there was a firmament, that the sky was hard, and that God would open up these like little faucets up there, and the rain would come from this great big uh, sea up in the sky, and that's where the rain would come down. They just couldn't understand this miracle. We're surrounded by so many miracles, and we just have to take the time to notice them and to appreciate them. And one of the miracles that we can have any Sunday you want, any holy day, is right here at the Mass. And so in preparation for the Mass, I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience. Send them the light of your Holy Spirit, 
they may seek the things that are above, where neither moth consumed nor rust destroy. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The lesson for this morning's Holy Mass is taken from the Epistle to the Colossians. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on the earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, there, there is not Greek or Jew, there is neither circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave-free, but Christ is all and in all. Here ends the lesson prescribed by the Church for this morning's Holy Mass. Amen. My life is worn out by sorrow, my years by sign. My strength fails in affliction, and my bones are consumed. But I have you, Lord, I say the Alleluia, alleluia. To where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of Bob Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Some of the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and your arbiter? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed, for though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. And then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build bigger ones. There I shall store all my grain and all my other goods, and I shall say to myself, Now, as for you, you have many good things stored up for many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, to whom will they then belong? Thus it will be for the one who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich in the matters of God. By the words of this holy gospel, may our sins be forgiven. Praise Jesus. Actually, it's 
from the vice president and general manager of AT&T New England. Now, I imagine that she's a mighty, that is a mighty impressive position. I'm sure that the vice president has to be well-educated and she has to be an intelligent person. So what she has to say should be important, not a waste of her time, and not a waste of my time either. The letter is addressed to the holy name of Jesus Church. And with that formality out of the way, it then proceeds to say in a surprisingly casual tone, Hi, Jesus. So, <laughs> I'm thinking, wow, she thinks I'm Jesus. You know, I've got other form letters, and they, you know, after that holy name of Jesus, the form letter will say like, Hi, holy, or hi, holy name. But this one went out of her way, very intelligent woman, to say, Hi, Jesus. So I'm thinking, wow, she thinks I'm Jesus. That's pretty cool. And a few times I've heard parents actually tell me that their young children, real young children, have thought that because I threw all this stuff up here, they thought that I was God. But this is a grown-up corporate executive calling me Jesus. In today's epistle to the Colossians, we are told that our lives are hidden with Christ and God. You know, maybe the Russians can find Hillary's lost emails. Maybe AT&T got me confused with Jesus because they found out that my life is hidden with Christ and Jesus, or in God, and so maybe they said, hi, Jesus, because that connection is so close. Or did you hear about the Patriots head coach, Bill Belichick? He said in an interview this past week on Friday, a reporter asked him about Jimmy Garoppolo, and I guess that's the backup quarterback for the Patriots, and I guess their starter, Tom Brady, has got a four-week suspension for deflate gate or something, I really don't follow all that football stuff, but Belichick's succinct answer when the reporter asked him, is Garoppolo going to be playing in game five instead of Tom Brady? And the coach said, Jesus Christ. Just like that. Again, maybe Tom, maybe Jimmy are also so hidden with Christ in God that Belichick got those two quarterbacks confused with Jesus because why else would he use the Lord's name in that way when the reporter asks who's to be your quarterback and the coach just goes, Jesus Christ. So we have to be very careful about the things that we say. That's an important name. That's a powerful name. And too often we treat it so casually that it can be used by a football coach in exasperation. It can be used in a form letter from AT&T. But Jesus Christ is the name. And I hope all of you remember on Palm Sunday when you say that name, we kneel towards the sacrament. It's a name that has reverence. It's a name that has power. It's not a name like Jesus Christ. And you know what we've all done that. We've all said Jesus Christ. And this is the place where you should say Jesus Christ and it should lift you up. Why would we say it outside of this place in anger or disgust? But for as unpolished as this form letter is, as inappropriate as Belichick's answer was, you know, they may be able to help us understand a very bewildering statement about us Christians having died and then having been raised with lives that are hidden with Christ and God. Maybe they're jarring them. You know, out in the world, Jesus Christ isn't so startling. But when a priest says it from the pulpit, hopefully when you hear Belichick's words, Jesus Christ, hopefully that offensiveness kind of resounds a little. Maybe they're jarring enough to help us realize how close we're supposed to be as Christians to Christ. And not just take that name of Christ and even a Christian so casually and even subverted, so that instead of a statement of rejoicing, it's just a statement of exasperation. So to begin, we should know that all of this talk about raised with Christ and you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God, that is not about dead Christians. It's not about Christians that have already gone up to heaven. It is about all of us. It is church language for all of the baptized. Back in the day, baptisms were performed on adults, not little babies. And they were performed by full immersion, not by pouring a little bit of water over a child's head over at that baptismal fountain. Jesus went into the Jordan River, and John dunked him under the waters of the river and then brought him back up. And I'm sure that Christians would have tried to mimic that same practice when they began to baptize. And the earliest church saw a hidden reality being played out in all of this being dunked under the water and then coming back up. If the person was submerged under the water in the rite of baptism, it symbolized the death and the burial of Jesus. When they went under that water, they died. They went into the grave, just like Jesus went into the grave over here in Station 14. As Jesus actually died, so the person being baptized died, 
to his old self and then went under the waters of baptism. That's why we hear the injunction, put to death the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and greed that is idolatry. Greed is placing money in the place where God is. Greed is placing anything of stuff in the place where God is, and the New Testament calls that idolatry. Baptism was more than a one-time event. Baptism was supposed to be the beginning of a brand new life as a Christian, as a person living like Christ, actually dying to their old way of life. Now this new life was connected directly with Jesus' resurrection. The person dies, goes under the water. The person is raised back up out of the water. Just as Jesus was raised, so the person emerging from the waters of baptism was reborn. And that's not to be taken lightly. The old ways are replaced by the new. This means that the baptized person is supposed to be a changed person. And this is why we hear again in Colossians, if then you were raised with Christ, and that doesn't mean a death, that doesn't mean after we die and go to heaven, it means after we have been baptized. If you who were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We are supposed to hear and now act like we are Christians, that we are ready to go up to heaven at any moment. The one baptized is called a Christian, and Christian means that your life is hidden with Christ and God. Jesus, in other words, he surrounds us, he enfolds us, he encompasses us. We almost become one since you can't tell us apart. That's how close Christ and Christian are meant to be. So a letter with a salutation of, hi, Jesus, or a coach who confuses his quarterback with Jesus Christ, that's kind of, sort of, onto something. Obviously, it's only an automated form letter. And the hi, Jesus, is because of the holy name of Jesus Church. And Belichick was just annoyed by the thought of a ridiculous question. But the idea that each of us who have been baptized are hidden with Christ and God, that is no mistake, and that is no hyperbole. There is a very real connection between Christ and Christian, between Jesus and each and every one of us. And we're supposed to live up to that connection so that we and others can even imagine a confusion of names. That's where the name Christian comes from. His name becomes our name. What an honor, what a privilege, what a joy, what a power. It is not supposed to be a statement of anger or exasperation. Jesus Christ. Not like that. We are supposed to treat that name with honor. We're supposed to name, treat the name of Christian with honor. And all of this ties in with Jesus' parable of the rich fool. Here was a person judged successful and probably very happy by the standards of the world. Then and now. Wealth has taken on an identity of its own. Everybody talks about wealth like, that, like that's the goal of life. And he could lead in this story a life of leisure. He was free from all want. His priority in this life where he had so much only to take care of himself. But in the parable, God calls the man a fool. Not Jesus. In Jesus' parable, he says, God calls the man a fool because he could not see anything beyond his own pleasure. Not only did the rich fool not see the promise of eternal life and only cared about this world, he also did not care about the needs of other people. Their plight was unimportant to him. It was not his concern. It was not his responsibility. Let them take care of themselves. And God says, you fool. He lived only to fulfill his own needs. Instead of being hidden with Christ and God, he was hidden in piles of his own ego and his own stuff. And neither left and neither make any difference for good in the world. And so God, not Jesus, but Jesus in the parable says, God calls him a fool. We only have a certain amount of time and a certain number of chances to make a difference in our own lives and the lives of other people in this world. If we blow past all of it and think only about the power and the potential of more money and also of only what we can, how we can take care of ourselves, then we are ignoring the promise of all of our baptisms that each and every one of us called to be hidden with Christ in God. That we may not be judged by God a fool, that we may instead be confused with Jesus because we take Christ and our name as Christians so seriously. For this may we pray today in Jesus' most holy of names. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Well, my Lord, as we gather before your altar on this summer morning, we begin by saying thank you for the gift of rain after such a long period of drought. We also offer our prayers at this time for the health of David Belanger, who had a stroke yesterday, as offered by uh, Mariana and Richard Foster. We also continue to offer our prayers for Doug Robinson, who is now in hospice care, as offered by his daughter, Jenny Whitman, and also Karen Herzig. We offer prayers for Meg Connors by Ellen and Don Skrosky, Carl Dickinson by Joe and Jake Kuschuk, Randy Clements by her grandmother, Dottie Baronis, fathers Ray Drader, Jan Bielczyk, and Maurice Lizelle by myself, and also for Frank Skrosky, who is the uh, twin brother of Don Skrosky, who's offered by him, the Skrosky Gates and Kirkendall families, and also for Dr. Richard Poe, as offered by the Poe and Foster families. Are there any other intentions that you would like to offer to the congregation? Um, yes? Lord, for all of these prayers and all of the private intentions that we bring to you in the privacy of our thoughts, and also, Lord, we ask you to bless each and every one of us here gathered. We also ask you to be with those who are perish who are unable to be with us here today, and also those who are perish who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, and our salvation, he came down and man. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and then he became man. For our sake, he was crucified by the Father, Father, suffered and died in the Spirit. On the third day, he rose again, in fulfillment of the Scriptures. He is sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to the Lord to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the human life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I have not known without baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. All people's works will perish and decay, and all their handiwork will follow after. Oh. 
high and creation of the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Receive, O Holy Trinity, this offering, which you make to you in memory of the passion, the resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, in honor of Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that it may be available to their honor and to our salvation. May they intercede for us in heaven, whose memory we celebrate on earth, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Father Almighty. May we receive the sacrifice in your hands, for our Amen. Heavenly Father, we offer you these gifts, to whom all good things are from whom all good things come. Grant us the grace to wisely use all of the gifts that you have given to us for your glory and for the benefit of us and of others. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. Throughout all ages of ages. Love, longing, and resolve. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. In the world you will face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. For their sins I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. But they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me, I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. After these and other words of the archpriestly prayer and with holy fervor, our Savior took bread with his holy and venerable hand. And having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and eat of this, for this is my body. taking also this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hand, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, All of you take and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, of the new and eternal testament, the mystery of faith, which for you and for many shall be shed for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you shall do these things, do them in remembrance of me.
energy and spirit, which he bestowed in the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed apostles, martyrs, and all of those who resolutely march under the banner of our Savior, that being supported by your help, may always be free from sin and secure from all despair. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God. Throughout all ages of ages, To our sanctification and life everlasting. Amen. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity according to your will, who lives and reigns, God, world without end. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who according to the will of the Father, through the cooperation of the Holy Spirit, has by your death revived the world, deliver me by this most sacred body and blood from all my iniquities and from every evil, and grant that I may always fulfill your holy will, who lives and reigns for all ages. Amen. Partaking of your body, O Lord Jesus Christ, which I, all unworthy, dare to receive, may not serve as a judgment, but through your mercy may become defense of my soul and body and a desire for heaven. May the sacramental union with you, Jesus Christ, my Master and Savior, awaken in me living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. May it make me a willing and zealous servant toward fulfilling God's purpose on earth. And may it at last unite me tightly with you, O Christ and God, in eternity. Grant this who lives reigns of God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Shall I return unto the Lord for all the grace that he has rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon the Lord, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my heart, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
body and the blood of Christ. The body and the blood of Christ. Thing came into being. 
What has come to be in him was light, and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might be through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone who is coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or the will of flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory is of the Father's only Son, full of grace and of truth. 